let's get set up for 2024 in my bullet journal. Again. <laughs> But Erin, didn't you already set up a 2024 journal? Yes, I did. This one, I'm calling the giveaway journal, and it's not for me, it's for you. This journal has the whole first half of 2024 in it, and I'm giving it away to one very lucky winner. But you'll have to stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can enter. Also, hi, I'm Erin. Thanks for clicking on my video. <laughs> It would be remiss of me not to start with a big shout out to the folks at Scribbles That Matter who have provided the journal that I'm using for the giveaway journal. It is this one right here. This is the Scribbles That Matter Pro Dotted Journal. It's a five size, 160 GSM pages, and it is in the lavender colorway. It also comes with a fine liner pen that is tucked into the little pen loop here. So you are all set for all of your journaling because everything else inside is already done for you by me with my own two hands. I thought I'd just show you a couple of the features of this book. It's really set up for people who bullet journal. So the inside cover has a key section where you can write down any symbols that you use regularly within your journal. On the other side, there are some lines where you can add your name and maybe any other decoration that you might like to add here. Over the page, we've got two blank pages here, which I think would work really well as a swatch sheet if that was something that you like to do in your journal. I won't be including a swatch sheet because I won't be sending all of my stationery with the book. There is this section here, which is designed to be your table of contents, where you can write down what is the important element that you need to remember about the book and which page number you can find it on, because yes, these books do have numbered pages, as you can see in the bottom right corner here. It also comes with this really nifty grid spacing cheat sheet ruler. It has these color-coded systems for for the most common divisions of the page so that you can work those out very quickly and easily. I make these for myself in my own journal, but these ones come with it, which is kind of cool. Just gonna tuck that into the back pocket here for safekeeping. And all of the stickers, washi tape, general ephemera that you see me using in this video are from the folks at Journal Say. As always, there are links to everything in the description down below. I think these guys do a pretty good Black Friday and 11.11 sale, so keep an eye out for that. Now we're gonna jump straight into the book and start setting up the cover spread for the 2024 giveaway journal. And I wanted to tell you a bit more about the why behind this journal. Why am I doing a second journal and then giving it to someone? A few reasons, actually. The first and foremost is that I have already started on my journal for next year and I'm using a watercolor journal. I'm going to be painting in it a lot. I know a lot of people don't paint in their journals and prefer to stick to stickers and washi tape. This way I can still give you some inspiration for stickers and washi tape while still being able to set up my own journal in the way that I want to, that I want to challenge myself a bit this year, you know? Next is that it's just really super fun. I love setting up journals. Having the opportunity to do two 2024 initial journal setups just fills me with joy. And the third is that I have more stickers and washi tape and other such stationery than I could ever personally use myself. So this is a great way to use up some of the stuff that maybe isn't the perfect fit for me or that I've used once and I might not come back to again. So it is an outlet for that as well. And it won't just be this initial setup, I am doing the whole first six months of 2024 in this journal. I'll be releasing the plan with me videos for each month as it becomes relevant, but I will have them all done and ready to go before it ships out to the lucky winner. I'm completely obsessed with these beautiful sheets of scrapbooking paper. They're very thin and a little bit translucent and they have this stunning gold gilding on them that makes them look like, funnily enough, vintage storybook covers, which is the theme of my own bullet journal. This is the easy way to do it without painting and stamping over the top of them, funnily enough. I've used some PET sticker to line the middle of the page. I've used another PET sticker over the top of that, actually a tape that I cut up to put the 2024 numbers right down the middle of the page and then just a little bit of blue on each side with those papers. These stickers look like they come in strips, but they're actually not kiss cut. It's just one big sticker sheet. So you have to cut them out yourself, but I think it's worth it because look how beautiful this is. Like jewels all the way around the page in a border, love it. I didn't really go into this setup with an incredibly formed idea of how I was going to use all of these elements together, but the way it has come out just with trial and error, a bit of experimentation, and the fantasy vibes, of course, with these holographic castles. Look at that reflection. Oh, so good. I'm really happy with how it's coming together. We'll actually come back to this spread and add a little bit more to it later when I remember the butterfly stickers that I forgot about. But first, I wanted to ask, did you notice my lovely silver bracelet that I've been wearing as we've been setting up? I wanted to tell you all about it and where it came from. It's from Ana Luisa, the sponsor of today's video. Based in the Big Apple in New York City, Ana Luisa is a jewelry brand that makes timeless, dainty, and beautiful pieces to help bring a little bit of luxury to your everyday without breaking the bank. 
Each piece is made to last both in terms of quality and style while still being affordable and sustainable. I love this trifecta of beauty, affordability and sustainability. It makes for really confident gift giving, especially in this festive gifting season, because you know you're giving your loved one not just something beautiful that they can wear for years, but something that won't hurt the planet and that will make them think of you every time they wear it. There's also a two-year warranty on all of Ana Luisa's pieces, plus free US shipping and free exchanges for that extra peace of mind. I've been all about a dainty bracelet lately. I feel like bracelets and earrings are the perfect gift because you don't need to know a size or a length to find something that will work for your giftee. I'm wearing the Rowena bracelet. She's my go-to everyday bracelet with her sweet little daisies, and I've been wearing her non-stop for the past few weeks. I love how a really fine bracelet like this can elevate a look with a tiny little bit of sparkle, and I always want a tiny bit of sparkle in my day. And don't worry, gold wearers, the Rowena bracelet is available in gold as well. I'm a silver girl most days, but I do also have my moments where I love to wear gold. And I'm also incredibly picky about my jewelry. I like to walk the line of classic and elegant, but I also want it to look perfectly at home on a main character of a fantasy novel. <laughs> the Lucy bracelet really shines in that sweet spot. She's got these three little stars, and I truly do feel like a fancy high lady of the night court when I wear it. I don't wear gold every day, but when I do, I wear Miss Lucy here. Right now, Ana Luisa are having their November sale where you can get up to 30% off, so it is the perfect time to take care of your gift shopping early, find the perfect jewelry gift for someone that is very special to you, or maybe pick up something lovely and special for yourself, because you're special too. You can explore all of Ana Luisa's gorgeous offerings and learn more about their materials and sustainability practices at the link in the description. Thank you so much to Ana Luisa for partnering with me on this video and bringing a little extra magic into my everyday. We're moving on to the future log or the calendar spread now. And I'm using the same layout that I used in my own journal here, but of course we're going to decorate it quite differently. So I'm turning this into a Dutch door, which means I'm removing the outside of the spread on the right here so that it reveals part of the page behind it, which mainly means that I can decorate a little bit less and still have it be impactful all across the spread. You best believe if it saves time and it looks great, it is definitely something I'm going to implement in a journal. The first spread here is for the first six months of 2024, and these blue lines are to have the initial for each day of the week, so M for Monday, T for Tuesday, and so on and so forth. I'm starting them on a Monday because I like my weeks starting on Mondays. I know some people prefer their weeks to start on Sundays. That's just not me, so I am setting this up the way I would want to use it if I were not me but still me. Does that make any sense at all? Let me know in the comments below whether you like your weeks to start on Sundays or Mondays, and maybe I will take it into consideration for the next giveaway journal. I'm using these letter stickers for all of the headings this time around, so I'm going to have to take my time a little bit here to get all of these letters onto the page because obviously it takes a little bit longer than writing, but maybe not as long as stamping. I haven't compared. Letter stickers are a really good way to get around having handwriting that you're not that into. If you don't want to practice and improve on your handwriting, you can use stickers instead and it will look fantastic every time. Same thing with stamps, of course, and we do use stamps a lot on this channel, but I'm trying new things and I'm learning new things and I'm pushing myself. And that is the theme of 2024, as well as fairy tales and storybooks. That is also the theme of 2024 and has also been the theme of 2023 quite a bit, if I'm being honest. I love a rounded corner on a Dutch door because it makes it look like the book came that way with that page already smaller than the others. It makes it very intentional. We need to write out a whole bunch more numbers and letters to do the second half of the year. Even though this journal is technically only going to cover the first six months of 2024, as far as the monthly spreads that are set up in there, in you know the, the January setup and the February setup and whatever else, I personally find it really helpful to have space for the whole year in the beginning of my own bullet journal. So I wanted that same flexibility for our giveaway winner. So we're doing the whole year for the future log slash yearly spread and everything else will be a six month version. But this one we're gonna do the whole year.
If you were wondering what I left the space on the left and right sides for, we clearly don't know each other that well because of course I left it for decoration. I love decorating my bullet journal. It's what keeps me coming back to it. It's what keeps me excited about using it every month. So decoration is a really big part of the journaling process for me. I know that's not the case for everyone, but I wanted to make sure that this was really beautiful so that whoever ends up with this journal in their hot little hands will maybe also be inspired to use it to be really organized and really on top of all of their things for 2024. That's what I hope. That's my, that's my dream for you. I'm trying to keep a little bit of every element represented on every page. So I'm using my castle stickers again. I'm layering them up with this washi tape that I actually didn't use on the previous spread, but I think it works wonderfully with the theme and it's nice to have a more matte element in amongst all of these other shiny things too. So that's always good. Our future log is now complete. There is plenty of space next to each month for our giveaway winner to write any events and reminders that they need month to month. So we're going to move on now to the goals page. Goal setting is a very personal thing, so I've decided to keep this page very open. It's really just a box with space to write goals, and if our giveaway winner wants to divide that space into sections, they can do that. If they want to just keep it open and have one overarching goals section, then that is totally fine too. I wanted it to be as functional as possible because obviously I don't know who's going to end up with this book, so it needs to work for the most amount of people, if that makes sense. These papers are a really effective way to decorate quickly because if you turn them long ways, they are the same width as an A5 page. So I just tore the top and bottom off one that has a beautiful frame on it that matches quite well with our cover. I'm joining those up with a gold paint marker so it sort of looks like it was supposed to be a frame like this all along. Of course, we need our goals heading here and that's actually pretty much it besides maybe some castles and stuff. We need stickers, of course, but lots of space for goal planning for our giveaway winner here. The page on the opposite side also really affects the way that I affect the page that is next to it, because obviously you look at them both at the same time, even if they are for different purposes. This one is still goal related. It's a grid that is 12 spaces tall that I've divided in the middle so that it makes 24 spaces, so that our giveaway winner can make a little bucket list of things that they want to do, you know, 24 things in 2024, and they can write them in these spaces. They can be a little bit more frivolous maybe than your overarching goals for the year, Say you had a room that you've been meaning to decorate in your house, one of them maybe would be decorate that room, or it could be something more frivolous like try that new restaurant or something really fun like go to five theme parks this year or something, I don't know, I don't know. You would know better what goals work for you. So just a fun little page to have a little bit of a good time with. I love that this video is turning into like 50% plan with me and 50% instruction manual for whoever ends up winning this journal. I so enjoyed decorating the other page so simply but so effectively with this paper that I'm doing it again. I actually got its little twin, a matching one exactly, and we have a touch less space this time, but I'm going to do the exact same thing where we tear off the top and bottom, making sure that it doesn't interfere with the heading for the top part. Instead of the gold marker, this time I'm going to use those beautiful blue jewel strip stickers to connect up the top and bottom here so that it's extra decadent as a frame. And then we are golden, although this one I don't think I could fit any castle stickers on, so we're going to need to improvise a little bit there as far as further decoration goes. Now we know there are 24 spaces here. Do they need numbers? Look, probably not necessarily, but I'm going to give them numbers so that our giveaway winner knows what order to write things in, I guess. Although it's not a chronological thing, but I don't know, I just thought it would look nice with numbers, so we're stamping some numbers in here. Some new challenges have appeared. I've got these lovely butterfly stickers that are super shiny and also these dainty little flowers in blue and also yellow tones that I thought would work really well with this theme. These are just like the strip stickers where you have to cut them out yourself. They're just a sheet of PET with little sections printed on them, but I find that's not too bad. It takes a little bit longer to cut them out yourself, but then you can have little clusters of things if you want to and it makes them almost more flexible, so that's kind of nice. Of course, now that we have flowers and butterflies on that spread, we need to go back to the previous ones and make sure that everything is consistent. So we're just going to jump back through the pages that we've already set up, add some flowers and some butterflies onto those to make sure that they are extra dreamy and beautiful, and then we can carry on with the next spread.
Isn't it funny how a little bit of distance from something can really change the way you look at it? I was so happy with this cover spread just with the castles, but adding the butterflies made it just level up and I love so much the way it's come together. If you have been following me for any period of time at all, you will probably know that I am a big fan of financial tracking in bullet journals, so of course our giveaway winner gets to have some financial tracking pages as well. We're starting on the left here with a budget page, which is not something I have in my own journal, but I have a pretty weird situation where I'm self-employed, I don't have a fixed income, it changes from month to month, whereas if you are a person who works a normal full-time job, that will probably not be the case for you. So I'm planning this out more for somebody who has a more typical employment situation than me. I will explain every part of this page once it's all kind of set up so that you have an idea of how it works and maybe if you wanted to incorporate something similar into your own journal, you'd be able to copy this spread for yourself too. But first let's just get everything onto the page and then I will explain how it all works once we have defined what everything is supposed to do as far as writing a heading above it, you know. There wasn't enough room for stickers here so I just wrote these ones with a pen the old-fashioned way. There is however enough room for stamps in this bills tracker section so of course I'm going to put one for every month. I didn't want to just do an initial with the stickers because I didn't want to run out of the stickers when I know I'm going to need them for some more things later on, so stamps for now. We're going to have another kind of grid layout on the facing page. This one is going to be for tracking savings and we will get into how it works in a minute. But once again, let's just get all of these lines on the page first and then I'll walk you through it all. Let's have a little rundown on how this spread works. At the top we've got the income section which I've divided into four. If you're someone who has multiple income streams you could use these all for separate income streams or if you're not, if you're someone who has a fixed income you could use them instead with a yearly amount, a monthly amount, a weekly amount and something else, I don't know, for the last box. You can work that out. Below that I've assigned some spending limits and I've divided this so there are six spaces. You can place a different category in each of those spaces and then set a spending limit for maybe an annual or a monthly or even a weekly amount that you want to spend on something like takeaway food or whatever. If you need more space than that, you can add another line in between each of those rows and you can end up with 12 spaces instead of six. And then the bill tracker, which I feel is pretty self-explanatory. If you have bills that reoccur annually, which is usually a cheaper way to pay, then you can write them down in the space that corresponds to the month when they come due and hopefully then they will not sneak up on you. On the opposite side we have the savings tracker which I haven't put a heading on yet but at the top we assign the purpose so what you're saving for. There's space enough here to do six different savings goals so you don't have to use all of them or all at the same time. Underneath that is the goal so the amount that you want to save and then every month at the end of the month you can write how much you have saved towards each purpose and the last row here is for the date that you achieve the goal and you can celebrate being an excellent saver. And of course we need to add some decoration and some headings onto this one as well, so it's time to add some more washi tape, some more stickers. I absolutely love tearing up washi tapes. It's funny, I think I would actually prefer to use a wide washi tape and tear it down to the size that I need, rather than a thinner washi tape. It's just, I don't know, it's part of who I am. This washi tape has a lot going on. It's quite busy with all of the floral details on there, so Generally, it's kind of a good enough decoration on its own, but of course we need little bits of every element, otherwise the theme doesn't feel consistent. So we need some gold lettering for the headings at the top here, and we also need to add some shiny, shiny stickers. Definitely a butterfly or two.
Now that we're all set up to be financially responsible in 2024, it's time to set up the next spread. I'm actually not putting a title on this one because it could be really flexible. And I'm gonna let the giveaway winner decide how they use this spread. Originally when I was setting it up, I was thinking maybe it would be for memories because that's what I'm doing in my own journal, a space to write down maybe highlights of each month or favorite things that you did or just general things that you were enjoying at the time. Because it's divided into months, you could also use it for something like a content planner or a project management spread where you're planning out things that you have to do in the future. You could add a little calendar to each of these boxes if you wanted to. You could use it to track things like when movies or books that you are looking forward to come out or maybe tracking what you read each month or watch each month or anything really. It's a very flexible layout. So it is up to you giveaway winner and I will be including the rest of the letter stickers so that giveaway winner can add a heading to any pages that they'd like to. If you were setting up a page like this, you wouldn't necessarily have to stagger the boxes like this, but I like to do that because it gives me an opportunity to decorate and you know I love to decorate. So of course I did that. And you can of course still decorate around boxes that aren't staggered as well. I just, I like it this way. I did feel like it was still lacking something, so I'm jumping in with a couple of Tombow Jewel Rush pens. This one's my favorite blue, it's the 533, and I'm highlighting every second line of every second box, if that makes sense. Kind of jumping, alternating across the page. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the gray N89 as well, just so that there's something extra on this page without having to stick anything on that takes up more page space. It's one of my most favorite ways to decorate when a page needs something, but you don't know what it is. Funnily enough, my other favorite way to decorate when a page needs something and you don't know what it is, is to add a box or a border around it. And we're kind of doing that too with these strip stickers. So that's kind of funny. All of my tricks coming out in one go. <laughs> then because this is potentially gonna be a long-term planning thing, maybe for the person who wins this journal, I thought I'd go ahead and do another six months so they can plan the whole year in here if they want to. So we're gonna do the same thing again, except for July through to December. Highlights, memories, project management, uh, content planner, assignment tracker, book tracker, movie tracker, however you use it, I think that spread will be really helpful. This one you might have seen on the post-it said spare. That is because I don't know how the winner will use the journal as we've established. And there might be some things that they want to track that I didn't consider or a page of just pretty things that they want to put together. Maybe even just use all of the leftover stickers and everything that I send along with the journal to make a pretty junk journal spread here that I've kind of started off for them. So this one is the spare spread because just in case, you know, it's just there in case giveaway winner needs something extra. <laughs> As such, I am trying to make it very flexible. So we're just doing a bit of decoration in the bottom left corner and the top right corner. I'm going to add more of the stickers, but not take up too much page space so that if they need to put a chart or a grid or write a lot on this spread, then they can do that, hopefully. Hopefully I didn't use too much space. Sometimes I get a little bit carried away when I'm having a really good time, but I think this one we've done okay. Just in case they need even more room, we're actually going to set up a second spare spread. And this one I'm going to do a little bit differently. So rather than decorations on the outside edges of the pages, we'll do the top and bottom this time. And then they'll have a different layout to use for, you know, sometimes you just need different amounts of space available. 
And look at the sun hitting those butterfly stickers. That is the most beautiful thing I think I've ever seen. Now, these are just the initial spread pages for this journal. There's going to be a January, February, March, April, May, and June set up in this journal as well, although I'm not showing you those yet. They're gonna be a little surprise. But if you have been watching this video thinking, yeah, I'd really like to use that journal for next year and you would like to enter the giveaway, here's what you have to do. Of course, you need to be subscribed to my channel. It is the rules of every giveaway in social media world ever. Then you need to jump into the description and follow the link to the Google form that I have included. I'm using a Google form this time because I find it really hard to keep track of YouTube comments as entries. So we're using a form so that it's easier for me to get in touch with the winner of the giveaway. You just need to answer four quick questions there. Your first name, your email address, your Instagram handle, which is an optional one, and tell me what you are most looking forward to in 2024. The giveaway is open internationally. I'll be drawing the winner on the 25th of November, Brisbane time. I'll be announcing the winner on my Instagram stories and my YouTube community page. Don't worry, I will just share your first name and your comment that you entered with, what you're looking forward to in 2024. I won't be sharing your personal details and I will be getting in touch with the winner by email as well. So make sure you are checking your spam folders around that time, please. Let's have a little flip through of these pages all together. I love how shiny and blue these ones are. It's very mystical and mysterious. I hope you'll stick around on the channel to see the rest of the monthly spreads that go into this journal. I will be doing another giveaway journal after this one for the second half of 2024. So also subscribe if you'd like to be able to enter that mid-year next year when that rolls around too. Also, don't forget to shop Anna Louise's November sale where you can get up to 30% off beautiful pieces of jewelry just in time for gift giving season. Thank you so much for planning with me. I wish you all the best for the giveaway and hopefully you also got a little bit of inspiration for your own 2024 journal from this video too. If you'd like to see the 2024 setup in my own journal, you can see that at the link in the top right corner here. Or if you'd like to see all of my other bullet journal layouts from all throughout 2023 for some more inspo, you can find that at the playlist underneath. See you again soon.